friend. Yeah, nice welcome to everybody. We have in this knowledge jam session Mike Lancy from the United States, I think, where you're located at the moment. Yes, we're down in Dallas, Texas. So. Ah, all right. <laughs> all right. And uh, you have been like one of the sponsors of the audio only bar camp with the great technology that enables short form audio communication within Teams. And we were in contact after the camp. And I'm a big fan of audio in all formats, normally more long form audio like podcasts and stuff like that. Uh, but also uh, I like tweeting the last days. I don't know how it's in, in the United States. A lot of people here in Germany moved to Mastodon, like uh, from Twitter to Mastodon and have short form text communication. And I think uh, short form audio communication is important as well. So I'm really honored that you uh, agreed to give us a presentation on the Soundbite platform you develop, your co-founder of. Also talk a little bit about audio, the background, why audio is important in your perspective. And then, of course, yeah. also show us the tool and the technology. So, Mike, yeah, this is I, yours. No, that sounds great. And I, I think for the the size group that we have, I would love to keep this interactive, right? So, yeah. you know, as we kind of go go about, feel free to ask questions and such. And uh, I think it's a really interesting point, Simon, that you just made around Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, a lot of we're we're 24 months into Soundbite, right? So we started this about two years ago. We've been very very fortunate to see. Uh, the the global uh, adoption right of, of soundbite and I'm I'm not sure if it's so much the the audio part audio is a big part of it um, but I think there's just this need uh, today to to humanize communications right uh, I think the the Twitter layoff that's going to happen in about three hours is a great example of uh, lack of humanity right, right. Uh, for many organizations and. You know, it, it was kind of like it was, it was my big proof point this morning as I was putting together some some postings and musings uh, for, for social media around just that being the, the perfect exemplary proof point uh, that just demonstrates the communications gap, right, that exists today uh, between uh, leadership and employees, right? And I, I feel as if that gap only continues just to grow uh, yeah. the more physically distant we are. Um, and it, you know, in one regard, it's it's a little disappointing, but in another, it's a huge opportunity, right? It's a huge opportunity for the folks here, myself, right, to help uh, bring personal communications, right, into like the inter internal communications and knowledge management, these spaces, right, and new ideas that help uh, leadership and executives, uh, you know, just simply communicate better. Um, yeah. And I, I think it's fantastic opportunity there. And then, you know, just a couple of key stats that kind of back that up. I I literally just written up something yesterday um, around how 65% of leaders uh, believe that they're effective communicators, right, when it comes across the organization, and yet only 35% of employees <laughs> feel that they are good communicators. So a couple of things. One, 35% uh, of executives believe that they're not good communicators, right? So they're obviously probably looking for, for ways to communicate better. Uh, and then the other 65% that feel that they're good, right, is probably a false sense of security, right? I bet you Elon thinks he's a good communicator. Um, you know, <laughs> in some regards he is. Uh, but in other regards, right, it's it's a huge gap there. So I, I think when you kind of look at the, you know, just dial it back into the why, um, you know, we're even here today is that there is a, a real a real need, right? There's a real need in the market today to uh, help humanize communications. And I think that is a, a really it's a key attribute of audio, frankly, as we start talking about the science of audio and we start talking about some of the reasons why we we started with audio. Uh, at Soundbite, right? And then also, as you start looking towards the future where video even comes into play, right? And we start kind of talking about mixed media and addressing. Uh, so that's that's one key area around just humanizing uh, communications. Short the question. other, yeah, for sure. Uh, do you have a slide that you show at the moment? No. No, okay, yeah, that's fine. No. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I came prepared to have a discussion with everybody yeah. here. Um, so, yeah. you know, I'm, 
Um, you know, some of these things, like when you think in real time, right, there's yeah. events that are always occurring around us. And I think that's the nature of the world we live in today, Perfect. right, is yep. that you got to got to have some level of agility, um, which we'll talk about later is agility, right, being another key factor playing into communications, authenticity and timeliness, right? Uh, another great example, I, I know we have folks in Germany, but Adidas uh, and Kanye West, right? Mm -hmm. Another uh, key, yeah. yeah, yeah, that whole yeah. thing, right? Adidas um, like 20, 20 kilometers <laughs> from where I sit right now. Yeah, and, and it's a I wonderful know. company. It's a wonderful yeah. brand. It's a wonderful thing, right? And, and, you know, we start talking about timeliness and relevance of communications, uh, both internal, external, et cetera. But, you know, the delay and Adidas, right, speaking out, against Kanye West and I understand there's probably a lot of legal contracts and stuff but you start thinking about that as well around timeliness uh, and what reputational harm that may have done right to their their company right um, around the world um, so there's serious impact right around um, communications right and timeliness and humanity um, and you can see that and I think today it only becomes more pronounced right because with just the social media platforms and all the options that are available, there's there's plenty of arenas for conversations to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think if you're not embracing um, audio or video or other kind of new forms of communication and you're simply relying on, on written text, um, that you're leaving an opportunity for people to either misconstrue your words, uh, take your tone the wrong way, uh, and opening up misunderstanding, right? And I think those are some of the key themes as we start talking about audio today, podcasting, right, is being one aspect of it as well as just, hey, how do you take this new concept of like short form content and apply it to business um, to address those types of business challenges that are out there today? Um, any questions, comments from the group or around those types of topics? I'd be curious what y'all think uh, when you start kind of just experiencing these types of events, right? Because here we are, we're all on different sides of the world, but we know exactly what each and every one of us is talking about. I think that tells you the impact and the reach, right? That that things have today <laughs> and, and so fast, right? It happens quickly. Um, also, the, I, so, think, I think the amount <laughs> of information and communication out there is a relevant, uh, uh, relevant aspect because a lot of people yeah. here in Germany are complaining that there's already now, there's too much too much Teams communication, too much chats, too much OneNotes, too much emails, too much whatever. Yeah. And uh, at the moment we are adding on top of, we're adding one one layer after the other, or one channel after the other. And a lot of people, I think, also need help to organize that and have an mm -hmm. idea what not to read or not to listen to. Yeah, I, I think I we have that that problem um, since since uh, Gutenberg optimized um, the the printing of books. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the, yeah. um, I, I remember that once I read that um, exactly that time uh, there were people complaining about um, who should read all that what is printed now, um, and exactly this this is this is a topic um, when I try to explain to the people what's happening on 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 the enterprise social network, and um, that you definitely do not have to read everything, and that 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 the the question it's not a question of the flood of information; it's a question of setting your priorities, setting your filters, um, and trusting people, not trusting things trusting people and for for that um or based on that you might get the information um even faster you 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 think um, or uh, before you think about so th this is this is a statement of harald schirmer on the enterprise social network you can get answers of questions you never thought to uh, to ask mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah it's, a, it's a question of filters and then, you know, from that regard as well, right, you mentioned kind of just the number of channels. I, I think, yeah, you kind of see the results of that, right, and the performance um, of, especially in the Microsoft ecosystem, right? I mean, there's two employee surveys tools now even, right, like, plus everything else out there. So, like, you get overwhelmed, right? And I think you see that as a result of the performance, right, of a lot of the, the traditional communications channels. And, Tomas, you could probably tell me on the enterprise social side, um, but, you know, at least on the email engagement 
and, and the engagement around intranets, right? You know, a good email maybe gets like 15% like true readership, right? Actionability. Um, and then on the enterprise uh, intranet side, I, I think the lightest stat I saw from one of the Microsoft partners was like really excited that if you post new content on the intranet and 30% of people, so three out of 10 people, you know, see that. Uh, and then that kind of wanes down over time, right? Is is defined as good engagement, right? Um, and to your point, there's probably two contributing factors to that. One is that there is a lot of noise. And then two, I'm, I've got a job to do, right? Um, so, you know, what is it and how is it that I should consume that information, right? When do I go to Yammer? When do I go to Viva Engage? And, you know, the, the second caveat about that is that each of these technologies kind of relies, yeah, exactly, um, kind of relies on the user, right, to come to you uh, versus you coming to, to your audience. Um, and that's where I think, you know, for today, I'll focus some of our conversation around uh, just the leadership and executive comms aspect of audio, uh, because I think it's a very unique opportunity for um, leadership to take ownership and then for technology to uh, support a new way of helping them reach out and connect with their employees uh, versus asking their employees to come connect with them, right? And mm -hmm. I think a great example of that would be uh, with Viva Engage in this new leadership corner, right? It's just another case of saying, hey, if you're interested in me, the executive, I want you to come knock on my door, right? And see what's going on with me versus me as the executive coming to you and saying, hey, this is, what, I'm really interested in you, right? My employee. Um, and I think that is something that we should, you know, just all be cognizant of as a core foundation for what, you know, in my opinion, great leadership is. Um, so I'll pause there, you know, if there's any discussion or points or thoughts around that with the group. I think the, uh, it's. I was thinking about why Microsoft is is pushing that leadership corner so much at the moment, and I think the, you got the aspect. It's with my colleagues, I can talk on an ongoing basis, but with a top executive, I'm I don't have the opportunity to meet often. And then audio is a format that makes the person much more present. It's much closer to me than any news that's written on the internet written by a corporate comm person or something like that. I can really listen and have have the person close to me, like yeah. it speaks to me. Yep, exactly, right. And I, I think that's one of the kind of the, the big things. And I'll show you some performance stuff here in a minute for the group of around kind of what we're seeing within this audio space for engagement. Um, I had a meeting probably like three months ago with uh, a customer and they had an employee communications app and they were like super excited about, you know, their adoption and that they had like 30% of people uh, engaged. And then I told them, I was like, yeah, we're getting like 60 to 70% engagement with audio, right? And I think there's a couple of things. One is the format. I, mm -hmm. I, so I saw a comment in there. I think Hans, you just said that you like to screen text, right? Um, and I think that's, you know, kind of this, new way of communicating of taking both audio and text and bringing it together into a holistic message right um which is man now i'm going to go down the neurodiversity path right mm -hmm. um and that our workforces are neurodivergent right one in four people has some form of dyslexia so while some people really prefer to read uh, other people may have different preferences right for consuming information i listen to books my wife reads them great example right yep. there um my children uh, and everybody that I associate with under the age of 40, uh, they use audio messages in their messaging tools, yet I'm still using emojis and now I'm old because I use emojis, um, right? So like there's all these different communications preferences that, you know, you, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah. So like there's all these different communications preferences, there's neurodiversity and it's like, all right, cool. If I was try to re-envision, right, reimagine like a common format, right? Like a common way that I could bring everybody together and satisfy each one of their preferences. Like what would that look like, right? And that was one of the things that when, you know, we started envisioning Soundbite was how could you take these big trends, right? The big things we talked about around creating better connections, hybrid workplace, bringing people together, right? Allowing people to, to be timely, right? And then on the other end, how do we make the most inclusive communications possible, right? Like, and 
email by nature, I don't feel is an inclusive format. I don't feel like a blog post is an inclusive format. Um, I just, I've never felt that way. Um, and that's mainly because of, I, I don't read terribly well, right? It's always been a struggle. I can articulate very well in conversation, but when it comes to, to written text, it would take me about an hour to craft an email versus a couple minutes to just say my soundbite, right? So like you start thinking about these types of things and bringing them together. Um, so that's another thing we'll kind of look at today, right? As we kind of go through this session. Um, so are there any questions or high level conversation before I kind of start talking a little bit about, all right, now that we've set the foundation for what the heck's going on in the world today, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, perhaps one, one thought that we often have I discussed would, in Germany yeah. in the podcasting community because you said uh, what is not an inclusive medium uh, a lot of people a lot of podcasters complain that when they podcast it's like sending a newsletter out it's like a black box you don't get feedback because if you listen to a podcast in a podcast app uh, you listen it mobilely you don't have a way to react or comment or talk back to the person so this would be interesting to get your opinion also on is, is, is audio, especially short form audio, more inclusive than podcasts or long form podcasts, for example. So you you just hit on a major roadmap topic <laughs> <laughs> that we are currently working on. Um, and it is around exactly that the ability to provide reactions as well as replies like private replies back to a creator to open up that that two way engagement loop right yeah. um, in in the enterprise right and I, I think you hit the nail on the head is from like a yeah you have podcasting is interesting to me because like most of the podcasting like technology market was made first for external second for internal and all of them were created with this intent of I'm going to have my own specific podcast application that you now need to go to, right? Which is in addition to Teams, in addition to all these other things I have, Viva Engage, Yammer, et cetera, um, to consume the podcast itself, right? Now, I don't know what percent of the market today like are podcast junkies, right? Where like, hey, I have my podcast app, I follow RSS feeds and all these things. That's, that's a subset of the market, but in the corporate environment, we're looking at a much broader audience and everybody's going to have different preferences, right? So how do I help kind of include all of them into my story, right? And I think that's another thing that we've tried to answer uh, with the approach we've taken, right? And I can, I'll go through that as well um, from an integrated perspective. So yeah, I think good point. Um, any other questions before we kind of jump into a little bit of what's going on? Yeah, Spotify, same, same deal. Spotify owns the market here in, in the US. When I think of podcasts, I think of Spotify, um, mm. period. I've got Spotify on my phone. Um, and that's that's how I consume all my, my public podcasts. Um, I've yet to find too many corporate podcasts, to be quite honest with you, that I'm truly interested in following. There's a few out there. Um, but a lot of times I just feel like it's just the content isn't quite there, right? Which is another thing when we talk about podcasting and uh, just messaging in general is like, you know, what's interesting to you may have an audience, but if you're looking for the broad audience, what's going to be interesting to everybody, right? And talk about that because we've seen customers be successful on both sides. We've seen them have great success with things that we didn't think would work. And then we've seen them kind of fall on their face uh, when they've done things that we thought were going to work great. So, um, yeah. So a little bit about, you know, Soundbite from a solution perspective, right? Um, Okay, cool. Yeah. So, um, and there are a few examples that actually have, we have customers now that are putting their podcasts external because uh, they feel like they're recruiting tools for the ones that don't talk about confidential information. Uh, so typically those are going to be your broader executive overviews and such as, or interviews and such as that. So, um, all right. So when I go into sharing mode, just know that I am working on one monitor today so that we won't be able to see the chat. Um, but you could probably see my desktop, my screen. It's coming. Cool. All right. I'm gonna just I'm gonna start on like two real quick slides, uh, and the the reason is is I just want to show you guys some of the like real world performance that this solution is getting, and I think it's important to 
know that out of the bat and then kind of like start thinking about like why why does this get this type of engagement right because um i think it's important to note that what i had mentioned earlier we are seeing six seven times engagement over traditional email we are seeing free x engagement over intranets right um our adoption even in the yammer realm is is quite good uh, so i think it's important to note those types of things and you know kind of the key concept around soundbite is it's a centralized creation experience right so it's a single creation experience that i'll demonstrate for you uh, either out of microsoft teams or our cloud studio and then the platform handles notification and distribution to virtually any enterprise app that you'd use today right so that's kind of one use case secondary to that we have an appless model so I know that you guys you know, have a lot of customers that have frontline workers, which has been a big area of adoption for Soundbite. And what an appless model allows you to do is reach people that may not want to have corporate apps on their phone, right? And if they do have a corporate on, app on their phone, uh, we reach them directly through Teams so they don't need to have Soundbite on their phone. Uh, and if they don't have a corporate app on their phone, uh, they can hit the web application, right, via a basic browser and be able to listen to their recordings and audio there as well, right? So when you start thinking about inclusivity, it's not just the format, it's not just the content itself, it's also how do I like actually get to that content, right? And that's one of the things that we've tried to do is for anybody that can have an app, hey, just use Microsoft Teams, right? You use it every day. And then for folks that may have a, a non-smartphone, maybe something that's just a basic intranet phone, which is, it's very common here in the US, for frontline workers, in fact, about half of frontline workers uh, even might have a temporary phone, right? Something that they they only keep for 90 days and they mm -hmm. might end up with a new phone number after that, right? Um, so it uniquely ad addresses that um, challenge. Uh, the other interesting thing I'll say and I'll show is like, you start thinking about other places like digital signage and places that you might come across um, content at work um, bringing soundbite into digital signage via QR codes, right, is another idea that we've seen work really well in retail. Um, so we have a customer Sheets. They own 600 different gas stations here in the U.S., and they incorporate soundbites into their digital signage. So recently they did campaigns around awards, and these awards are from their executives. Well, imagine walking by the sign and then being able to hear directly from the founders, right, a personal congratulations to you and your store. Um, that's something that hadn't been done before, right? And that's something that they can do today. So just different ways of helping bridge that, that communications gap and create those connections. Uh, performance wise, so here's some real world performance metrics, right? So you can see here, this was a recognition program for customer engagement as well as a survey. Uh, the customers link logistics, awesome client. They build and distribute, um, they build distribution centers for Amazon and they manage those, right? And they recently had a big survey campaign and this is for their property management team. There's about 280 property managers all over. And what their job is to do is to go out and interview and survey all of their clients, right? And they had a completion goal of 100%, right? Well, one of the big challenges with reaching property managers is exactly that. They're remote, they're out on site, they're frontline. Uh, they don't always read their email. In fact, they very seldom read their email. And the goal was, all right, cool, let's motivate them. Well, Amanda, their VP, she doesn't ever get to meet these people in person, uh, just by the nature of the, the business. And she's had a goal of having them get to know her. Uh, you know, the result has been around 60% engagement for every communication. And when I say that, I mean people actually listening through the message. Right, and then the format itself, right? The inclusivity of the text, right? Helping distill her message for people that prefer to read it uh, has also really helped. And as of today, I think they're like 90% complete, right? And this is a recent one. Um, they're almost done with their surveys and they're gonna hit their goal, right? Which is incredible. Mm -hmm. And a big uptick started to happen right after they started sharing the sound bites with the, the front line. Uh, any questions about that as we get going? So the call to action here is a kind of a survey then? The, the, what you have to do is explain in the soundbite and then people give feedback? 
So in this case, they, they were doing customer engagement surveys. So there's no real call to action. There's no in this. There's no ask right for them to complete yep. something. However, what it is is it's providing almost bulleted point information around progress and helping take some of the information that's actually in her recording and then putting it in the text format, right? Yep. So rather than doing a transcription on it, what we've done is we've encouraged them, don't just transcribe it because the transcription is gonna be really dense a lot of times for people. Yep. Break it out into bullet points so that while I'm listening, I can skim those bullet points of those key takeaways and then take that information from there. And that's the way that they, they've used yep. it here. Understand. Right. So I'd almost say it's like a multimedia newsletter to some extent that allows you to interact with it no matter where you are, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in whatever format you choose, right? And we're we're seeing really good engagement with that. Uh, the last thing before I jump into you know some demonstration for everybody is uh, the model for Soundbite is consumption based. This is a huge consulting opportunity for our partners, and the reason is is that we don't we're not like your traditional intranet or even Microsoft that's going and saying, hey, you're paying us on a per user basis. Our customers sign up for a base platform, and then it's all based on engagement, right? And engagement means actual listening of the sound bites themselves, right? And part of that reason is, is that when we started this, we wanted to create a solution that creates client value, right? It's much more delivery than sales pitch. Uh, you know, where I feel like a lot of people have really big sales pitches and they don't deliver. We wanted to be more, or, hey, here's the pitch, make it really easy to start, and then we'll realize value, right, as you create engagement within your company, right? And I think that's a, a big difference for us. Um, and then the other thing just to note is we're talking about internal communications. It can be used for a lot of different things, right? Um, I suspect that Microsoft will continue to kind of build into the collaboration space with the ability to create some videos and such as that, which they've, they've done already. Um, but, you know, when it comes to the specificity of the internal comm side, I think you'll continue to see this thing uh, take off. So uh, any questions and I'll go ahead and jump into Soundbite. You do uh, you have Cisco as strategic partner for the audio processing or? Um, yeah, so interesting. So Cisco has a product similar to Microsoft Teams, um, oh. which used to be WebEx and now it's called Spaces. Oh, right. And their spaces product we have three clients actually that are cisco clients and not teams clients mm -hmm. uh, the same demonstration i'm going to give you today in teams is also available for anybody using cisco yeah, understood. Yeah. so yep so i'm going to share my computer audio because what's soundbite without audio being shared <laughs> and uh, i'll go ahead and jump in so this is soundbite for microsoft teams or I'm sorry, that's actually Soundbite in the studio. So this is Soundbite Studio. I'm going to revisit this at the end. We still see um, the slide. This is Soundbite. Pardon? We still see the slide. Oh, you do? Yeah. Now we see Soundbite. Uh, oh, okay. See sorry. The, no problem. I forgot to hit computer sound again. There we go. Just let me know when you guys can see my. Uh... Still loading. Yeah, no, I yep. see. Okay, cool. Took a few minutes to recompile. Uh, so this is Soundbite for Microsoft Teams. Uh, what you're going to see is a very consistent user experience throughout this, right? Uh, and one that provides both creators as well as uh, people on the listening in, an easy way to really get into it, right? Um, there's two primary paths to creation. One is individuals with the ability to create and share, right, with their teams. Uh, so think of leadership, think of like managers, think of people that might have a team that they, they are over, right, or different divisions. They will typically be creators. And then the other typical creator uh, would be internal communications, right, where they create on behalf of leadership, right? So a couple of things to note there. Also, I'm very privileged, right? I'm an admin, so I see these trash cans and bar charts, right? So you basically, you see what, based on permission, if you're not permission to create, you'll never see uh, create a soundbite, right? 
Um, very similar to content management platforms, you have the ability to see your feed. You also have a history. Uh, we have partners right now writing integrations about taking these and then posting them into Microsoft SharePoint if they're going to be more long term corporate records. Um, but a lot of times sound bites themselves might be considered more transactional or messaging based uh, where the retention policies are much shorter, right? So it just depends on, on what the client asks for. Uh, creation of content is very, very straightforward. Uh, the first thing you do is you give it a title, right? So this might be like a, uh, you know, great news. Q4 is better than expected. And if I'm doing a short recording, I just do it here in the browser. The experience exactly the same on my mobile device as well through Teams, right? Mm -hmm. So you can create virtually anywhere. And I'm just simply recording my soundbite. And a couple of things, we're making sure that we get a good, clean quality recording. Uh, we're also ensuring that people get feedback, right? That they are recording with the moving bars. Uh, and there's a lot kind of going on in the background there to ensure that this goes well. If you want to restart it, you can do that here. You'll notice with audio, we do not trim the audio, right? We don't offer post-process editing mm -hmm. for short form audio. Uh, two reasons, as we've seen thousands of these created, the need for trimming is not like video where you have a physical movement or something at the end that mm -hmm. you want to trim off to turn, right? So if there's dead space at the end, it's just simply the end of the recording. Uh, this makes it more convenient for the creators, right? Especially if you're talking about a business user uh, to be able to go about the creation without having additional overhead. In the case of a podcast, everybody we work with has their own preferred production tools. It could be Adobe, it could be any of the like cloud studios, et cetera. Uh, so what they'll do is they'll actually create the podcast outside of Soundbite. And then they'll simply do a file upload, right? So they'll simply go in here, They'll do a file upload of a recording, and then they'll use Soundbite for the distribution aspect. Mm -hmm. Any questions around just the creation of the content itself before I get into notifications and distribution? When the MP3 files are not stored in SharePoint, where are they stored? Soundbite's 100% Azure based, okay. leveraging graph. Um, so we deal with geolocation, GDPR, uh, all via regionality of storage. Um, and yeah, it's a 100% Microsoft based solution. Yeah. So, yeah. So, we'll jump into distribution, right? So, I'm Mike, I'm a leader, and I need to now have this thing heard and I need people to know about it, right? Um, rather than taking it and uploading it and trying to send an email around it, we're going to automate that entire process. Uh, Soundbite hooks in with Active Directory and other single sign-on providers like Okta. And what this does is this is going to determine notification of the Soundbite as well as access, right? So Soundbite from like an internal perspective is actually more secure than email because access is going to be driven by these Active Directory users and groups, right? So in this case, I'm going to share this with their engineering team. I might also choose an individual such as Monica. And this is going to control that notification and distribution path. OK. Let me go ahead and click on show advanced. We talked a little bit about the calls to action rather than writing them right now. I'm just going to go ahead and copy some out of a Word document. It's the audience. And we we recommend when you do a. Oh, sorry. With the audiences you put in, okay, they will they will get a Teams chat message that they received a soundbite, or how do they recognize they have a uh, they are targeted by soundbite? Yeah. So we automate three primary paths of notification. Uh, Microsoft Teams is one of them. Uh, Cisco WebEx is clearly another one, um, and then also an email notification, and we support SMS. Mm -hmm. In EMEA, we've yet to have any customers choose to do SMS for two reasons. One is uh, worker kind of regulations are a little bit different than here in the U.S. And then the other reason is, is cost, uh, that sending a text message and receiving a text message costs money in EMEA uh, versus here. Yeah. 
so it's always, I mean, it's, it's always a push channel, like it's chat, email or SMS. You push it out to a target group. Yeah, it's, a, it's typically going to be a push. And then it's going to be a more passive channel because we have the soundbite feed mm -hmm. for intranets. And you can also post them to Yammer, right? So we support both, right? You can yeah. push, which most customers do. That's what gets the engagement. And then you can also have your feed available within SharePoint. So, uh, so I went ahead and dropped this in. You can see I've got a couple links uh, to demos here, calls to action. We always recommend kind of an additive format for the call to action, meaning that we're not repeating ourselves. We're always just adding on to what we've talked about, right? So, hey, what's new about Soundbite? Why this matters to you? Why you should care, right? And then what you can do, right? That's a really simple call to action format that while listening to me allows people to really absorb the information even better, right? Security, this is trimmed as well. If you have permission to create a public soundbite, you mentioned the use case around companies starting to publish some of their internal podcasts and hosting them externally. Uh, if you do public, this will give you a embeddable public, uh, public uh, site that you can then put into like your internet site or anywhere else you want to have it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then the last thing is the scheduling and the ability to schedule here. So are, any questions around the creation process? You said public, this means if you if you set the soundbite to public, also a person outside the organization can listen to the soundbite. Correct, it creates a public link that you can then embed exactly that. And then this permission is controlled at a security level. So I'm Mike Lancy, I am a creator, but I should not have the ability to create public, right? You can turn that off, right? And turn it on as you need. So typically like marketing might be the only person that can create a public soundbite. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and hit create. And soundbite's starting to do his thing. While the notifications start to process, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the Cloud Studio. Rico, ask in the chat if the... And I want you guys to know what it takes to set up. Sometimes a question. Rico, ask in the chat if the... If Is a there a question bite, chat? Yeah, if, if a soundbite can have uh, chapter marks, like to jump to a certain position in the in the audio, I think he meant. So not as of today, and the re reason is, is that most sound bites are going to be under two minutes long. Mm. So it's going to be a quick hit. Uh, if we're looking at more podcast kind of future functionality, I would say that would make a lot of sense. But in the form of the short form stuff, it really um, isn't something that we've been asked for. Yep. Thanks. So. So you can see here, I actually have a new activity notification in Teams. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. This is going to be exactly the same on the mobile device as well, but in the interest of time, I'm not going to worry about sharing that out. Um, and what you're going to see here is I just jumped into Soundbite. I've got my great news, Q4 is better, implementation path. You're also going to see in my email that I have, uh, I have this new Q4 better than expected link. These are creator links, so these get sent to the creator. So when you asked about kind of like push notifications versus passive engagement, these are all links that you can use to pop it into a newsletter, right? So if you create a soundbite and you want to have it as part of your newsletter, you can use these links and that will help drive people as well. Uh, and then the other passive path to en engaging with a soundbite is through SharePoint and Viva where you then have a soundbite web part that's going to show you your personalized feed within soundbite as well. What happens if I reply to a chat message, for instance? Can I reply? Or is this sort of no reply process? So that is the roadmap question you asked uh, okay. earlier. Yes, yeah, so yeah. that was a question I really enjoyed earlier. Um, so when listening to a soundbite, what we imagine doing is being able to play that soundbite and then at the end, we have this acknowledgement capability today, which gives a report back to the creator on how many people have acknowledged it. We're planning on expanding this to reactions that will tell you, hey, these people felt this way about it. 
And then we also have a proof of concept built for replies, which would allow, say, if you sent me one, I could send you a soundbite reply directly back to the creator, right? So it's not a public reply. It's something that's internal to you, one-on-one -on -one message. Yeah. Um, so if you think back to the use case about leadership, you know, I feel like oftentimes in Yammer, you know, somebody might have a something they post, but there's stuff that I don't want to post because I don't want it in public, right? I don't want other people to see it. Yeah. But I would like to share my thoughts with you. So we want to be able to provide a, a safe way, right? Uh, a safe way for people to communicate back with the people uh, that are communicating with them. So I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge that. You're going to see the soundbite drops out of my feed. It's now in my history. And then I'm going to just touch on engagement reports real quick. Yes. And while we do this, I'll ask if there's any questions. Now, I engaged with this through another user real quickly, just to show that we've got one listener, audience of five, and then 20% engagement, and then also had an acknowledgement there. Uh, this is in real time, right? So as a creator, I can see my real time feedback uh, coming in and out of somebody, and that's phenomenal for pretty much anyone, right? I have a CEO that shares his sound bites, and he has two different groups that he shares them with. He has his frontline employees where he can see his engagement, and then he has his corporate employees where he can see his engagement as well, right? And it provides him with that real-time report around, hey, you know, who's engaging with me uh, from that perspective? And I think when we add like the replies and uh, the reactions, that it's only gonna help further build and promote that, that engagement, so. Um, any questions there? Answered one question in the chat. He asked, uh, are there differences in etiquette or language behavior in communication between audio dialogue and chat, text chat dialogue? That's a good question, and I don't know I have a good answer for it. <laughs> That's good as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Doesn't matter. So, yep. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead. And I'm just going to jump in real quickly uh, just for setup, right? So it's a three-step setup process. The first step is to become a customer. So that's number one. Uh, the second step is to connect your Active Directory or Okta to Soundbite. We also support other things like Workday and HRS systems because in some cases for Frontline, we'll connect into an HR system rather than an AD. Uh, your customer will then tell you, hey, here are our users or groups that we want to have brought in. You'll click sync. That completes step one. So that's the actual onboarding process for Soundbite. The next step is to apply deploying the Soundbite app via the Teams App Store, mm -hmm. which you can find on App Source. Very, very straightforward. You find it on App Source. You then deploy it, add it to a policy, and it installs right within eight to 12 hours for all your users. And at that point, you're ready to send your first soundbite. Uh, you also have the option to deploy the SharePoint web part that's also available in AppSource. And it's the exact same process you would deploy any other web part. So are there any questions around deployment? Um, most customers take about an hour or two to deploy, uh, which is incredible, right? Uh, I did one the other day, it took 22 minutes. So just to give you an idea, really, we're not focused so much on deploying a six month project here. We're focused on immediacy of value, so. So I'll pause there in case there's any other questions, because I think we're starting to come up on time here. Yeah, no more questions in the chat. I was asking Ragnar, since I know he's a, he's a, he likes audio very much if he's using uh, Soundbite in his tenant. <laughs> exactly. So I was already evangelizing Soundbite internally here at Quest. I got the information from our internal comms that she's thinking about it. Not in this fiscal year, but the next fiscal year is pretty close. So we should talk very soon, Mike. Okay. Sounds great. Well, I'm loving it. And I, you know, I love having the opportunity to talk with everybody uh, today. Thank you. All right. It's, it's Thank exciting, you. yeah. Right, I think there's a huge, huge opportunity in the world today um, for us to help people communicate yeah. a lot better. And so. this is really the best group here. So, so everybody in this Cognion Learn OS community are very strong advocates of podcasting, of audio only. There is an audio only bar camp um, organized here by Simon and everybody from the community. So this is the leading community, I would say, around um, corporate podcasting. 
I would, I would agree. You guys are making noise. I mean, I, I found out about you, right? Like, I, and you found me, right? Like, it was like one of those things it's that very, it's a very small uh, niche. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody knows yeah. each other. So cool. I hope I hope that a few more people would have shown up. Uh, but I will like take the recording and bring it to all the people who I know who who like audio in the organizations, because all, I have the feeling that a lot of people have now the. They feel that they need to have to do more with audio, but they don't have taken the step to enrich their infrastructures with with audio infrastructures. They have video yeah. conferencing, they have wikis and everything, uh, but these internal podcasting and audio platforms, so a few pilots, but it's not mainstream yet. So yeah. I think it's a long-term issue to push that forward. That, that awesome. Thank you very much, Mike. My observation, you know, after after the hype cycle uh, went down from Clubhouse, uh, we really need to to start the the to start pitching the value proposition again because there is very low demand around um, corporate podcasting. So we need to start the conversation and, yep. well, and what start we've... where we were actually like three years ago, but it's not. <laughs> we and what we've been here. finding is is using the short form audio for leadership and executive comms has actually started to get people interested in podcasting, right? Because it's such a simple message. You're sending emails, nobody's reading them. It's like banging your head against the wall, right? Let's try this different way. And then people see the engagement around their messages coming in via soundbite. And then it's a really easy conversation to say, hey, we did that. Why don't we do a little conversation, right? Because that conversation is technically a podcast. No. And now you got a podcast, right? And here's our best practices. We recommend it be five to seven minutes, no longer, right? Oh, what I would love build... to see is a, is a, is a yeah. kind of mini psychological study where you say, okay, listen, we take three, um, send to everybody, send to all employee messages from the C-level, and then we, we compare this message to the soundbite. And then, and then we mm -hmm. ask uh, a small group of employees, how do you feel? How do you react? How, how does it resonate? Mm -hmm. Email yes. sound bite and the and I'm strongly I believe from the bottom of my heart there is a difference compared to emails, and I think we we need to go down to this level of feeling it how it feels different to get a message because yeah. we live in a uh, in times of crisis and in a crisis we also have to communicate very very difficult messages and then when you can transport voice and and intonation it's so important to to get this tone into it because it's not only about technical things which we want to communicate it's about changes which are difficult and are, and have major impact on employees lives and that's yeah. why it's so important to to find the right wording and the right yeah. sound Strongly yeah agree. i couldn't agree more right couldn't agree more so there's one last question by hans in the chat can you say anything about costs or pricing like yeah, uh, I'll, yeah. I'll email that over afterwards because this can be published on youtube so i'll go ahead and provide that to you simon and then you can perfect. distribute that I out distribute. to the group yeah. so very well perfect. okay mike thank you very much yep. keep on fighting for thank audio you. we liked it a lot thanks yeah, have a nice friday i'll go back to you mike thanks all right. right take care everybody okay bye bye, -bye. thank you